So after yesterday's quite frankly shock win over Real Madrid, today we are playing the second leg and just have to avoid defeat and we're through into the semi-finals of the Champions League. Un, deux, trois. Dans les campagnes, Murgir, ses forces soldats. Hello and welcome back to the Money Bags. Today, Real Madrid are the team we are taking on, as well as Monaco in the league as well. So two really huge games to be fair. They're really important. Obviously, Real Madrid, uh, we carry on a 1-0 lead from the first leg. Uh, we're playing at home this time, so it technically should be a little bit easier. But we'll, uh, we'll have to see if it actually is true. And then we're playing Monaco, who are currently sitting third, who were top of the table for a little while, but have dropped off the pace recently. Since you're last with us then, uh, we've only played... That's not the right screen, is it? Since you're last with us, we've only played the one game against St Etienne. A 1-0 win there. Not the most convincing. Cavani got the goal. P picked up a little knock in the game. So he's been out for two or three days. So he's not 100% fully fit for this game. But he's going to be playing it anyway against Real Madrid because we have to use him. He scored 41 goals this season. So he's kind of a an, an automatic starter. What that does mean for us, though, is that we still stay top of the league. And we have a game in hand over Leon, who are behind us, level on points. Leon, who had been... Very, very good all season long. I said they were going to slip up at some point, and they have done twice by drawing to Marseille and drawing to Metz. So they've dropped four points in those few games, which means they've dropped down to level on points with us, and then we now have a game in hand. So potentially we could go three points ahead of them. And then we've got that goal difference as well, very significant goal difference. That's like an extra point as well. So I'd say we'd be four points ahead of them, really. Injury-wise, it's just Pastore who's out now, and he's out for one to two days, so he should be back actually in time for the game against Monaco. Uh, very interesting now that Danny Ewers is back, and he gives us another dimension to the squad. Now, uh, as I'm starting today's squad, Di Maria starts on that right-hand side, but we do have the ability to play Danny Alves there, perhaps as a more defensively-minded winger, um, so that'd be quite interesting, especially if we need to come back and defend a little bit more later on this game. But the lineup for today's game against Real Madrid, which is what we're all here for now, Ariola in goal, a back four of Kozawa, Thiago Silva, Mar uh, Marquinhos and Mario, Nine Gunners at CDM today with Baratti and Di Maria in the middle of the park. Mata and Neymar just ahead of them and Cavani starting up front for us. If we're being honest with ourselves, how has this happened? So, I mean, seriously, how have we managed to go one up against Real Madrid away from home with this team that they've got? It's just such a good team. Right, we're going to have to go calmly, I think. The media have given you a lot of credit recently, put on a worthy display. And, it, and it's given some confidence and, and motivated some players on the pitch, uh, two of them. Which is better than none, I suppose. But, you know, we're getting there with the team talks. We're getting there. And we're underway here at our stadium. The part de... I mean, I'm going to say, is it part of the Princess or is it Stade de France? I'm sure it's part of the Princess. I've not really looked recently. I can't say, you know, I, I, I know it off by heart. But I'm sure it's one of those two. Um, it looks like, though, Real Madrid are trying to form an early attack, though. Uh, the highlights has just ended. I was getting a little bit worried then. I thought it was about to end. And what has happened here? We've had another beta update. And finally... It's telling me the condition of all my players now, which is delightful because I didn't see that before for ages. It really used to annoy me. Uh, but now we can actually see it all, and that's made me very, very happy, actually. So good good job on the beta. I've got to say good job there on that update. We've now got a highlight now. It's Cavani on the ball through to Verratti. Verratti to Kazawa. Kazavana loses possession overall. Uh, I've sort of got my names mixed up there, but Benzema coming forward now. Skips past his man. Don't do this to me. Puts it across to Ronaldo. Ronaldo hits the post. And already we are having to defend for our lives, I think, in this game. It's, it's, it's a tough one. Real Madrid are a better side than us, the hands down. Honestly, they are. Uh, I know we've got Cavani, we've got Neymar, we've got Di Maria, we've got like Mbappe. But they just aren't Ronaldo or Bale. I mean, I reckon Cavani's better than, than Benzema. Um, but I'm just I'm not convinced by the rest of the side, really. They've now got a chance to put a cross in and it's put in. It's gone back for a corner. And I do apologise for the snoring, if you can hear it. The dog. I'm still looking after this dog for a little bit. Um, she's snoring away on the bed near me so I'll try and get to shut up in a minute but uh, Benzema through to Modric Modric to Carabajal, Carabajal through and Mario is there to clear it away but we're not we're not being great are we? And apparently our passing is shocking so we need to try and retain possession a little bit more Cavani picks the ball up then and he's coming for uh, hopefully our first attack of the game because we've not had a shot yet as far as I'm aware but uh, we've lost possession now but actually matters again gained it back Di Maria on the ball if we can just grab a goal that makes it feel so much better as Neymar puts it into middle and Cavani is there to score we're now 2-0 up on aggregate 1-0 up in this game somehow we are absolutely trouncing Real Madrid Okay, that trouncing is probably the wrong word to use there completely. Um, we're not trouncing Real Madrid. We've been very lucky to beat them 1-0, and we're currently incredibly lucky to be 1-0 up against them now. So, calm yourself down, Tom. I've gone for a classic, um, we need to stay focused. And usually this means that everyone loses focus completely. Um, but we've gone for a risk for it and used it anyway, so fingers crossed now, fingers crossed. Hopefully this PSG side is, is more professional to know that we need to stay switched on and... Uh, 
and that's something they will do because other teams I've managed just don't. Corner now for Real Madrid. She plays short to Modric and it's gone in the back of the net. Ronaldo with the goal. Now they've now got an away goal which means if they get another one it cancels out everything anyway. I mean the away goal cancels out anyway. Um, it does mean that if they grab another one it goes to extra time then penalties and so, so on and so forth. Right let's make some changes then. Nine Golan looking tired. He's picked up a knock. Rabio is going to have to come on for him which isn't the best move in the world if we're being honest with you there. I want to bring Kim Pembe on as well, perhaps. I think that's something we do. Taking off for Marquinhos is looking nervous and not play too well. We'll do that as well. We'll also issue a shout to tighten up a little bit. Tighten up, boys, because as it stands, we are sitting on a knife edge here. And this knife edge could go away from our favour as Varane puts it into the top corner. Oh, they're winning on away goals as it stands right now. We have to go... Uh, not there, there to tactics. We have to go overload and fluid. Confirm those changes and just pray that we grab another goal now. Neymar's free kick then as far as Rabiot. Rabiot through to Thiago Silva, through to Verratti. Verratti through to Di Maria. Di Maria into Thiago Silva. And Thiago Silva of all people has popped up and managed to score a goal. The tactical change we made were absolutely instant. Absolutely instant they changed there. And now we need to change back because... Uh, I don't want to try and yeah, well conceal a goal because that would be rubbish, wouldn't it? Um, oh, but there's a highlight now, though. Let's just wait for this highlight. If they score a goal from this highlight, we have to stay where we are. If they don't, we drop down to counter, but Ronaldo's through. Ronaldo, Ariola makes one of the best saves I've ever seen in my life. Like, let's drop down to counter uh, and also down to, to flexible or, in fact, structured, I think. Drop down to structured. We may drop a few men back as well, I think, um, in these final few minutes because I want to try and save this. Right, there's eight minutes left. I was about to make a change, but the highlight literally came on as I started talking, though. But Cavani has been put forward. Cavani! Cavani's shot saved by Navas there. We won the corner. We're going to make the changes now, tactical changes. We're going to bring uh, Neymar back. We're going to bring Mata back. Um, we're going to make Neymar a winger because he can sort of play like that. Can we bring Dani Alves on for Di Maria? And can he play as a defensive winger? He plays as a wide midfielder. We'll bring him on as a defensive winger on defend. Mata can sort of play as a central midfielder on automatic then. Verratti and Rabiot can stay as they are and Cavani can stay as he is. They're all the changes we need to make. We just have to hold on. Verratti through to Cavani. Just hold on to possession. Don't lose it now. Mata's been put forward though. Mata has been fouled in the area and we have got a penalty. This is literally the biggest thing that has ever happened in this whole series. If we took this away, we've won it. I'm telling you now, we've won it. However, our look with penalties in this beta has been awful. Has been positively awful. And it's not been awful now. Cavani has gone and scored it. We're 3-2 up now. 4-2 on aggregate. I can't see a way back in it to Real Madrid. I can't see them scoring two goals in the next four minutes at all. Benzema on the ball now for Real Madrid. Puts it through towards Ronaldo. And Ronaldo has gone and scored. Uh, that is not... I mean, I... Famous last words of me saying we're not going to lose us now. We're not going to score two goals in the next four minutes. They have scored one of them. We're going right down to Contain now. And Verratti has just been fouled. So that's... That, that, I mean, and, and some man has been sent off. Ramos has been sent off. That is good for us as well. Uh, I want to go to tactics. Six minutes added time. Are you joking me, referee? Are you actually joking? We're going to play even safer now. Um, that's what we're going to do. Oh my goodness gracious. Six minutes to hold on. But, oh, they actually could score a goal in that time, couldn't they? I swear to God, if they do, I will wake the dog up because I can't think of anything worse to do right now. I'm going to wake her up anyway because she's snoring so loud and it's probably being picked up by the mic. But this is it, surely, now. 96-20. Why is the referee not blown for a whistle yet? And he finally has. He's brought an end to proceedings. We've won 4-3 on aggregate. Three all on the day. But we have actually done something quite incredible here by winning against Real Madrid and going into semi-finals passionately. A nice victory, well done, boys. That's not the most passionate thing to say right now, but I'm delighted with everyone how they've played. So we've beaten Real Madrid. That, that is incredible. We've beaten Real Madrid. Seville, Seville have beaten Dortmund. Who else uh, are left in this competition now? Barcelona and Man United. Four. Yeah, I'm praying for Seville, to be fair, in the semi-finals, but... If they just dispatch with Dortmund that easily, maybe maybe I shouldn't be praying for them. I may even give them two days after that. Two days seems seems reasonable, actually, considering what they've just achieved. Well, here we are. 
Champions League semi-final draw. Let's see who we've got. Seville versus Paris Saint-Germain. That's the team I wanted, to be fair, so I'm happy with that. Barcelona take on uh, Manchester United. That's an interesting draw, but I'm delighted, actually, that we've got Seville because I think that is the easiest draw out of all of these, possibly. So I, I, I hold myself in confidence. This is the most confident I feel about a knockout draw so far, and I guarantee it means we're going to lose it now, isn't it? That's, it's just the way it is. So next episode, then, we're going to play both games against Seville. We won't bother about Green Camp in the middle, but we'll play both games against Seville. Um, then we'll have probably the last league game of the season, because uh, that would be an interesting one. We have to do that. And then, of course, if we get to the final, there'll be a Champion League final as well. So that should take us through to Friday, actually. Uh, we'll have the weekend off, because I need a little break. Um, the trailer for the main Lincoln save will come out probably over the weekend then, and we'll start Lincoln on Monday. So that's kind of the plan, then, for the next week or so. So strap yourselves in. In what is perhaps the miracle of the season, Amiens, who are a miracle themselves being sixth, have beaten Lyon 2-0, which means we have two games in hand with Lyon, which means we could go six points ahead of them in the next episode. So, quite frankly, I'm very, very confident now in saying that we have won the league. Right then, this is the side that's going to be taking on Monaco today. We've gone back to the more traditional formation that we've been using just because I want to try and get some different players into the squad and, and this sort of suits them a little bit more. So, Ariola is at the back. Kazawa, Thiago Silva and Marquinhos alongside Dani Alves who commits his return to the team now in his first full start for months and months and months now. Uh, Verratti comes into the side, although he's there actually originally wasn't he, but Seri comes in instead of Nainggolan. Uh, Mbappe comes in instead of uh, Di Maria. Mata stays there. Draxa comes in for Neymar and Cavani is up front for us today as per usual. Right, potentially could take us three points clear at the top of the table this game, so we need to make sure we capitalise on that and do the business today. As you can see, even a draw would actually be quite good for us. Even a draw puts put us a point ahead of Leon with a game in hand, so a draw today isn't detrimental. In fact, even a loss isn't detrimental because we still have another game in hand on, on Leon. They've, they've played 33, we've only played 32 if you include this game, so it's still a good place to be at the moment, and I'm very happy that it's turned out like this because at one point I was getting a bit worried that Leon weren't going to slip up. But luckily for us, they've had two draws and a loss now in the last four games. So beats are coming forward, though, for Monaco now. Uh, an early attack for them eight minutes into the game. Although their pass is a wayward one, and Verratti can clear it up towards Mata, who can pull it towards Cavani. Was trying to build a little attack now, but Cavani's pass was awful there. Gave it away to Lamar, but Lamar's pass was equally as bad. And now we're on the attack once again. So, uh, Dani Alves, his first major cross for a while, and he gets an assist nine minutes back into his... I want to say debut, but it's not his debut, into his return, I suppose. If you don't include last game as well when he came on as a substitute. If we ignore that... This is his first start in ages, and uh, he's just got an assist. So fantastic work by Dani Alves. Is he going to replace Mario? I don't know yet, because Mario is still very, very good. They're equally matched, to be fair. And Dani Alves not getting any younger, so I kind of do want to play Mario a little bit more, I think. Cavani on the ball, though, uh, on the edge of the area. Loses it at the last second, though, and now Keita Boldy has a chance to run forward. Gets it off to Sabitza, but Sabitza gets tackled at the last second now, and Ariola has a chance to show his distribution now, put it up towards Cavani, who wins it, uh, but Mata doesn't win it. But we st we're still pinging it around the midfield, Mbappe now on the ball, Mbappe puts it in towards the middle, and Mata is there with the header of all things. I mean, I don't know how Juan Mata has just won a header against all his people, but he, he has. So, uh, fantastic play, Mata, well done. Series free kick now, lofted into the area, cleared away, but only as far as Thiago Silva, who plays it in towards Verratti. Verratti can't quite find a through ball through, but Monaco's clearance is rubbish because there's no one up there. They're all back in defence. Draxler puts it in, and Juan Mata is there to collect his second goal of the game. One of his... He must be well into double figures now. He must be around 15 goal mark this season. He's been a fantastic signing for us. I'm so glad we got him. And he's been worth the money, every single penny of it, the 40 million or so we spent on him. He was absolutely fantastic. If you have a 40 million to spend on an attacking midfielder, highly recommend you get Juan Mata. Absolutely insane this season for me. A fantastic first half there. I'm absolutely delighted with the boys. Uh, we'll go passionately. Very happy with the way things are going. Keep it up, lads. And uh, not quite as much green as I would have expected. Lots of green in the upfront positions, but not so much green uh, down the back, which I mean, they, they deserve the green. They've played very well, not conceding a goal. So. A little bit confused by that, but we'll go into the second half now and uh, and try and get three more goals. Keita Boldy, though, on the edge of the area, puts in towards the middle, and Ariola just collects her. Monaco had a very good chance to try and score from the uh, right from the kickoff there. If Ariola hadn't collected that, that would have been a certain goal for them, and his distribution was rubbish there. Uh, Thiago Silva, though, makes the tackle, and Cavani has uh, not been able to run forward there. I assume he might have been offside actually it does that quite a bit you're about to go through and then it just stops for a free kick and doesn't tell you why but usually it seems to be offside Draxler on the ball now through to Verratti 
and to Mata Mata, who's been the key player today. Kazawa, though, gets tackled and he's out of position massively now. Sabitza has a chance to come forward now for, for Monaco. Monaco get the cross in, but it's a very, very poor one. Once again, Ariola there easily collecting that ball. Really, really too, too easy for him. Cavani now can't quite win the header, but Keita Boldy is back on it. And Monaco coming forward against Sabitza through to Tillemans. Keita Boldy back to Sabitza, and that was a lovely work move by Monaco, to be fair. It's 3 1 now. Uh, luckily, we did enough work in the first half to, to give us a secure standing in the second half but that was a great move from from monaco i mean i've clicked on the wrong thing here and now i'm on this screen which which actually looks pretty cool to be fair um if i knew how to use it i probably would use it but it all looks a bit complicated for me right now so i'm gonna have to try and learn this off camera but i know how to get to this now so that's kind of cool um maybe, maybe i just press analyze data by accident that's what that's how i came to that and, and that's what happened Right, a couple changes need to be made then coming into the end of this game now. We've got a couple tired players. Uh, Kazawa and Marquinhos both looking very tired. We want to save them both because they're great players. So we'll bring Yuri on and we'll also bring on... Uh, I thought Kimpembe was on the bench. I thought I'd put him on there. But clearly I've not, so good work by me. Marquinhos is staying on the pitch for now. Verratti is about to look very tired, but Monaco have just scored another goal. Um, so I'm not going to change Verratti. In fact, I'm not going to do anything else other than that. I'm going to leave it like it is. I didn't realise they were about to score a goal there. Um, I don't care how it went in. I'm just a bit more concerned that they've actually scored it. And how the 3-0 win that looked very nice uh, is actually looking a little bit in doubt. Yuri's thrown then through to Verratti. Verratti with a chance to cross it in. It's headed down by Cavani onto Mbappe's foot. And Mbappe hits the crossbar. But I'm, I'm starting to feel a little bit more nervous about this game than we did against the Real Madrid. So... If we can just hold on, which which we should be able to, we're a good enough side to hold on. Draxler gets tackled though at the last second, and now Lamar has a chance to come forward. Oh, look how many players I had forward then. Oh, it was four on two. If that ball had gone through, it was four on two. I think we may have to just drop things down now. Uh, let's get off attacking, uh, and let's go to standard, because that's, that's, that's safe to play in these last five minutes or so. Especially as uh, it was very nearly four on two there. That caught me off guard completely. Well, Fabinho for Monaco just picked up his 23rd yellow card of the season. He's literally nearly got a yellow card of game as Mbappe puts it so close, but yet so far away wide of the post there. Five minutes to hold on. There's a, bit, a lot of injury time in these games, I've realised. I don't think many games have five or six minutes injury time. It's usually like two or three minutes. So I feel like we've been hard done by in these past few games, especially when we're holding on to leads. Um, and we need to just hold on for this, those five minutes. It's a lot big ask for the players. Uh, the ball's going out of play there, though, with only two seconds left. So surely the referee's going to blow the whistle as soon as it comes back into play. It doesn't even go into play. He's blown the whistle. We've won 3-2. A really, really crap second half, if we've been honest there. Uh, I'm going to say a real Jekyll and Hyde performance there. And uh, Cavani looks stressed, apparently. But majority of the players did react quite well. So apart from Cavani, we'll, we'll take that as a win, I think. Well... What an episode that was then. We have now gone three points clear at the top of the table with a game in hand over Leon as well. So expect us to extend that lead for next time out. And also, next episode, we're going to be playing in the Champions League semi-final against Seville. So I'm dead excited for next episode. Join me for tomorrow for that because I'm going to go and play it now. So expect the episode tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching today's episode. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Jusque dans vos bras, égorgez vos fils, vos campagnes. Tu veux cet ordre d'esclaves, de traite et de roi conjuré Pour qui c'est ignoble d'un tracé, faire des montants préparés. Pas des coups hors d'étrangers, ferait la loi dans nos foyers.